Alex, you know, let's get back to the before she wrote in 1981. You know, she was a student at Princeton, and she had to write a thesis. So she sat out, and, and, and you know that somebody, you know, but listen, let's go back to the days when you and I, you and I were that, that, that age, you know, early 20s. Has your mindset really changed since you were 20, 21? No. You, you, you got no, to I've only smarter, you've learned more facts, and you've matured in your same beliefs. Is yes, my, yes, I was I was pro Second Amendment, pro property rights, patriotic American, and uh, my parents passed on what I can now look back in hindsight the proper you know view, the only view, pro liberty, true freedom, true individualism, and it's only become more seasoned and more intense. Well, she she's from the same mold. She, she has gone down through the same process. She was socialistic. She wouldn't sit down and write 130 pages about the history of socialism in a 20-year period at the first part of the 20th century, 1901 through about 1919, 1920. She writes a history of, you know, why the socialistic movement in New York, you know, got rolling and, you know, how it had to go through a bunch of battles and, you know, how it waned and, you know, didn't have any influence. Now, that is so, when you sit down and read what she wrote in her thesis, you can tell she's not someone that is against communism. She is somebody that throws in all the little faces, you know, the glories of socialism. She loves it. Now, if well, stay there, was, stay there. You've got the thesis, and I haven't seen anybody cover this, so I'm glad you ferreted this out. Larry B. Craft, constitutional lawyer and scholar, is our guest. We're going to come back and go through her writings, go through what this thesis says. And uh, then I'm going to ask him about this new Second Amendment ruling. We'll be right back. Larry B. Craft, constitutional lawyer, is our guest. We're looking at the confirmation of Elena Kagan. Will she be confirmed? Republicans are leaning towards, at least the leadership saying they're going to confirm her. You had four of the nine, that's a good point Larry made out of the gates, who said, we believe in total gun bans in America. It's not an individual right yesterday. And the way I read that decision is, but, but we'll talk about this in the next segment with him, is that, oh, you got a right, but we can regulate it down to nothing. And so this is the first time the Supreme Court, from my knowledge, has ruled that they have a right to start restricting. So I see it as a big defeat um, uh, overall, kind of like the last ruling. Say, well, we can regulate and restrict them. You just can't be a total restriction. Uh, but we'll get Larry Beecraft's take on that coming up later. Larry, getting back into her thesis, here it is, conclusion to the thesis. Uh, as she's basically just talking about why the poor socialist didn't completely take America down and like they were able to in the Soviet Russia. Please continue. Well, Alex, the, I think her conclusion, you know, this is a lady that wrote about for 130 plus pages in her thesis, the glories of socialism. She examined the 20 year period. It shows to me she's she's studying exactly what she likes. Now, the, the, the conclusion is a very good demonstration of how she feels. Could I read the very last paragraph of the conclusion of her thesis? Oh, no, read all the quotes you want directly well, from her. Right through its own internal feuding, then, the Socialist Party exhausted itself forever and further reduced labor radicalism in New York to the position of marginality and insignificance from which it has never recovered. The, the story is a sad but also chastening one for those who, more than a half a century after socialism's decline, still wish to change America. Radicals have often succumbed to the devastating bane of sectarianism. It is easier, after all, to fight one's fellows than it is to battle an entrenched and powerful foe. Yet if the history of local New York shows anything, it is that American radicals cannot afford to become their own worst enemies. In unity lies their only hope. She penned these words. She wants... She wants the forces of socialism that were battling each other back in the early part of the 20th century. Well, they're century a pack of parasites. They can never... The battle to unite and become America's radicals. And, 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 of course, they can't ever work together. They're a bunch of parasites, a bunch of vampires, and they can't, vampires can't feed on vampires. But the big banks literally finance these monsters because they socialize working people's wealth and then give it to themselves. And the poor working people that got conned into socialism, they end up in a work camp. Did you see her yesterday and today the way I've never seen somebody in a confirmation hearing 
uh, for the cabinet, for the military, scowl and act crazed. She is so arrogant. I mean, did you see that? Well, I heard your comments yesterday, you know, and only because of what you said yesterday, did last night of watching the boob tube, some coverage of it. And I agree 100% with what you had to say. She was scowling. I, you know, but she, hey, she's scary to look at. What more do you need to say, Alex? Well, I mean, yeah, yeah, I see people that aren't the classic attractive all the time, but if they have a jovial, nice attitude, I, I find them attractive. I mean, it's almost like a light bulb in somebody. If it's a nice light, they, they look nice. It can be an old fat man, doesn't matter. But if somebody's evil, I mean, when I look at her, I was getting upset yesterday. They had her on the TV set. There's a TV set. That guy, show him on the document cam. There's a television set in here in the control room and, and, and the broadcast studio. And I was looking at her, and it was just flipping me out that this, this maggot, this anti-Second Amendment, anti-free speech monster... That my children will live under this witch and, and just the, just the power tripping, arrogant scowl. It was driving me into a rage, Larry. People, you know, with, with, with that type of, uh, internal makeup, that internal makeup shows through in their, per not only their personality, but their physical features. So, you know, you were looking at somebody that was concealed. You got to see actually who she was, and that's scary. Well, that's another great point, uh, Larry. I, I, I continue. We're going to break here in a moment, but continue with any other quotes out of the thesis. I mean, that was, in fact, reread that. That was so telling. Well, uh, let me read the beginning of it. In our own times, a coherent socialist movement is nowhere to be, be found in the United States. Americans are more likely to speak of a golden past than of a golden future, of capitalism's glories than of socialism's greatness. Conformity overrides dissent. The desire to con conserve has overwhelmed the urge to alter. Such a state of affairs cries out for an explanation. She gives the explanation. Why in a society by no means perfect has a radical party never attained the status of a major political force? But now they have with Obama... And you've got, uh, in his book he wrote, and on TV, he says he loves Saul Alinsky. That's Chris Matthews. He loves communism. But then if you even call government health care socialism, uh, Chris Matthews calls you a racist. He knows what he's doing. He's using race card to bully you into submitting to his murderous takeover. These people are parasite criminals who want your Going gun. back to Larry B. Kraft. Larry, start over again. I mean, just say so you got five minutes, closing statements to the jury about Elena Kagan. And you're trying to stop her, and people are calling Congress right now, and they're calling the media, and they're trying to sneak her through. The Republicans are playing possum on this. I mean, they're letting it go through. You got five minutes to address the world. Uh, what would you say to them about Hare Elena Kagan? She grew up a socialist. She had a radical brother that introduced her to watch a philosophy that was socialism. She investigated that and found that the radical way of life was to her liking. Now, that radical way of life is just like all, everybody that's in favor of communism. Communism is nothing more than a, a raw power click at the top of society. They want to they want to steal from the rest of everybody else. So they go through this brainwashing program to the effect that says, well, you have no rights. You don't even have the right to property. And once you get a populist that's brainwashed like that, the ruling elite can take whatever they want. And they can do with, uh, with everybody whatever they please. That is the ideas that Elena Kagan loves. She loved it so much, rather than when she was in school at Princeton, wanting to, uh, to graduate and, and confronting the task of writing a thesis. You know, somebody that's going to write a thesis is going to pick a topic that they know they're going to have to investigate, and they're going to do something, about, they're going to write about something that they like. Elena Kagan picked a history, a, a little-known history, of socialism, the march toward socialism in New York. And she did a pretty good job investigating historical facts. But when you sit down and read it, 
You, you, you come to the real conclusion that this lady has died in the wool socialism. And if she wrote that at the age of 21, 22, 23, you know that somebody like that hasn't changed their uh, outlook on the world. She still really believes in that philosophy. And the only thing that's changed is she has matured. And her ideas along the same line have only become more profound. That is Elena Kagan. And, of course, you know, most people, you know, I'm a red-blooded American man just like you, and we can take a look at certain women and certain men and take a, make a determination as to their sexual pro, uh, propensities. And that's, of course, what Elena Kagan likes. So not only is she ha- coming from this socialistic background, the legal scholar that she is, and let me just tell you, Alex, there's... Well, even 